Hello, everyone. Americans in the whole world recently have been very concerned about the novel coronavirus. I'm Amar Awad, a fourth year medical student at Texas Tech El Paso, and you're watching Our Minds in the Time of a Pandemic. Today, we'll be talking about how the pandemic has affected our mental health, our healthy and unhealthy habits, and ways to cope with stress. To better understand what's going on, we'll talk with Dr. Longhurst, who is an assistant professor, licensed clinical psychologist, and psychology training director in the Texas Tech University Health Sciences Center, El Paso, Department of Psychiatry, as well as Luz Luna, who's an MS4, Memo, an MS2, and Avi, an MS3. Finally, for a perspective from a professor of physiology and a student mentor, we'll also have Dr. Irv Jansen on our show. We're going to start with Dr. Longhurst. Dr. Longhurst, can you please tell us what is going on in the world today? Is this the new zombie apocalypse? Well, thank you for having me on your show. Now, I know that we're all very concerned. We've been going through a lot of changes. And really, it's not a zombie apocalypse, but rather we're going through a period of widespread disease. And most of us have never experienced this in our lifetimes. And as a result, we're experiencing many changes to our daily lives. We might be feeling a range of emotions. We might be feeling down or nervous, fearful, anxious. We might be wondering how are we supposed to be feeling right now with all these emotions going through us? Yeah, you know, I wonder all the time about how I should be feeling about this. I just, I really can't figure it out. But can you tell me what has changed because of this pandemic? Yeah, you know, a lot has changed. I think everything about our daily lives for the most part and for most people has changed, including how much time we interact with our families, how we interact with our families. Even how we're interacting right now is not very typical of what we would do prior to the pandemic. Um, how we interact with our friends. And so it's not just the time, but the medium as well. Our school routines, so for students, and that also affects um, grandparents, caregivers, parents, teachers, um, educators, everyone involved in the schooling of children or even college students, where they're going to school from, um, how safe they feel if they have to return to school, the way um, our work routines look. Many people have also lost jobs or have um, a reduced uh, income. And so that financial burden can cause additional stress. And many of us have really substantially had changes in our plans for the year, maybe some celebrations, birthdays, weddings, anniversaries. Um, and that has all changed, including who we're able to interact with. Um, some of our elderly, because they're mo more at risk, many of us have had to have limited interaction for fear of spreading um, COVID-19 to our loved ones. So there's a lot in our lives that has changed. Yeah, I bet. You know, a lot has changed in my life personally, too. I just, I can't learn from home at all. Um, I do a lot better when I'm in person in clinics, you know, and learning from my patients uh, personally. Uh, my wife and kids are driving me crazy. Uh, I just, I can't make plans to get away and hang out with my friends either. So it's been a disaster for me so far. And I'm, I'm kind of really worried. You know, not to be worried. These are all normal reactions. These are a lot of things that um, have really changed in our lives and um, have, a, have affected us. So it's very normal to feel um, that way. And I think we have some information that we can um, show you on the screen in just a, a moment um, to talk about some of the different ways that we um, feel different. Um, so for instance, some of us might, again, be, be feeling fearful, um, sad, down, anxious, um, guilty in some ways, feeling a sense of shame. And I, I feel you with that. I have um, 
I, I too have uh, young children in my home and it's, it's very challenging juggling work, full-time work, helping my son with his schooling, and then also still, you know, doing what we would typically do with our family. And so everything about our routines have changed and that is causing um, various emotions. We could also perhaps feel safe and maybe happy in some instances because we feel that we're glad to be around our family uh, members, maybe more, spending more time with them than we normally would. So there really isn't a, a quote unquote normal way to feel. I think just allowing yourself and noticing how you feel is the important part when it comes to um, what we're going through during this time. Thank you so much, Dr. Longhurst. Let's go to Luz for a response. Luz, what do you think of what's going on and why do we feel this way? So I think um, that some of the things that we're feeling it's because we worry about many things. Uh, some of the things that are in our minds are maybe, you know, not getting the virus or um, preventing our families from getting this virus. Also, we tend to think a lot about the future. Um, there's a lot of uncertainty right now. Uh, we wonder how long are we going to be in this situation? You know, when is the vaccine coming? And so we have a lot of thoughts in our minds. Uh, maybe we have kids at school or adolescents or even college students. Uh, we tend to wonder how is the safety going to be? Are they going to be uh, having online classes or going to school in person? Um, and for those that work, you know, that have that provide for their families or for their household, money is another big thing that we tend to worry about. Um, some people have unfortunately lost their jobs or maybe their hours have been decreasing or maybe increasing and it's the same amount of money, you know, and these are all concerns that we all have. And of course, the ultimate concern is just losing someone. And I think this is um, something that we all think about during this time. And so, you know, the question is, what do you worry about? Yeah, definitely, for sure, Luz. I, I definitely have all these emotions and then some. Um, you know, there's a lot that I worry about personally, but we'll let our audience think about that in their minds and see, you know, try to come up with what things they worry about. But what am I supposed to do? How do I seek help? Yeah, so like we were saying, uh, this is all gonna affect all our lives. You know, it's not something that is just gonna affect our lungs or our health. Like we have been uh, listening in the news or from the health department, but this is also going to affect our mental health. And so the people that maybe, the people that are working, you know, they can feel afraid, they can feel more tired or more stressed out. And so the people that have other conditions, maybe, uh, like a mental health condition, maybe we have depression or anxiety, and maybe we have noticed that at some days our symptoms are starting to worsen or we have flare-ups, and these are just uh, normal things uh, because of the stress of the pandemic. Also, the people that maybe have the virus already, that have it right now, maybe you're wondering, where did I get it? Am I going to pass it to somebody? You know, should I have gone to that store? And so these are a lot of worries that we have. And so, like you say, there's, um, like Dr. Langhurst was saying, you know, there's a whole spectrum of emotions that we can have. Uh, we can have uh, an emotion of happiness or feeling anxious. And maybe you don't have to stick to just one, but maybe throughout the whole day, you go through several of these emotions, feeling insecure, feeling fearful, feeling without hope or feeling frustrated, but maybe when you get home, you're happy, you feel safe, you know, you feel kind of relaxed. And so this is just uh, to let you know that it's normal to have all these emotions. And so just to ask yourself, how are you feeling right now? And so some of us are experiencing some symptoms, some uh, kind of emotions that maybe are a little bit more concerning. You know, some people maybe feel like they cannot go on, you know, like this is affecting me too much. The pandemic is just too much for me. Uh, maybe you're extremely sad or maybe you feel guilty or worthless for some reason. Or maybe you stop eating. Maybe you're not eating anything or maybe you're eating a lot. Um, maybe you used to enjoy 
cooking or baking or fixing your car and maybe you don't enjoy those things anymore. Or maybe you cannot sleep or maybe you wanna spend a whole day sleeping um, because you don't have any due to anything, you're not able to concentrate. And the most concerning thing that, uh, that you could be experiencing is uh, feeling like you want to hurt yourself. And so for that, we have here some uh, resources that we invite you to really, really save um, either on your phone book or your your cell phone or your notepad, you know, the one that you have by your bed, just write down these numbers right now um, because they can be either useful for you, useful for a family member, useful for your neighbor. Um, and so these are numbers that we need to have at hand. If you feel like hurting yourself right now, call 911 now. Okay, this is an emergency. If you are just thinking about uh, hurting yourself, called 911 now. If also, if it's not an emergency, but you're concerned about it, um, you can also call the EHN crisis hotline. We have the numbers here, 915-779-1800. You can call and there will be somebody that you can talk to. We have another thing. If you have a cell phone and you can text, you can text HOME, H-O-M-E, to the number 7417 for one. And that's a number that you can just be texting if you have a cell phone. You can also call another number that we have here, the National Suicide Prevention Hotline. And that number is 1-800-273-8255. That's 1-800-273-8255. And so now we want to give you a moment uh, just to go around, get your pen, get your notepad, and write these numbers down. Because even if you don't need them, somebody that you love may need them in the future. Okay, so we're just going to give you a couple of seconds for that. Okay, thank you so much, Luz. Uh, Memo, do you have any input for us? Of course. And so, Amr, you're, uh, you're definitely not alone. There's a lot of people that are feeling all these types of, of ways about how, about how the pandemic is treating them and, and how they're coping with it. So it's like Dr. Longhurst said earlier, whatever you may be feeling, it's, it's okay to be feeling that way. And, and there are people to help. Uh, it's important to recognize that there's people to help, whether it be your family, your close friends, uh, people who are particularly close to you. Uh, there's always somebody here who's, who's willing to lend a hand, and it's important to look for those people. You can also talk to your doctor or talk to your counselor at school. Uh, those are people who are dedicated to helping others out, and, and those are available resources that we have to, to us. You can also talk to someone who is there to help you at these different uh, hotlines that we mentioned. So there's the EHN crisis hotline, which is a, a hotline for El Paso here. It's 915-779-1800. And there's also a toll free crisis hotline that you could also access. And we'll give you some time to jot those down uh, because it's important to have those at hand. And so it's also important to talk about unhealthy habits. Um, we might look to unhealthy habits as a way to cope, as a way to distract ourselves from the, the stressors that come with the pandemic. And so some of these unhealthy habits might include things like drinking too much alcohol, using drugs, uh, smoking, and, and hurting others. So uh, these are unhealthy and, and they only end up hurting us more in the long run. Wait, Memo, so you're telling me I can't drink to cope with this? Man, Dr. Jensen, can you give us a little bit of, uh, of your input on unhealthy habits? Well, first, thank you for letting me be part of your program. This is incredibly important and, and something that's very timely. Uh, in, in a, to share a personal note, uh, my wife and I, uh, are, we're older, we don't have any children at home. Uh, we both work, and this has been a, a, a major change in the way we, uh, the way we do things. And to, to say that it doesn't affect us, I think, would be, uh, 
be kidding ourselves. Uh, one of the things I would like to do, and one of the, that I, I hope I do, and, and I hope that uh, that I can encourage you to do, is uh, the the habit of empathetic listening. Uh, empathy is when you take the time to listen to another person, to feel what they feel. You feel with them, not for them. Sympathy is feeling for them, and you assume that you know how they're feeling based on things that you have experienced in the past. But most of the time, that really doesn't get us where we need to go, especially in a situation like this where there's a lot of stressors. Now, um, I, I think most of us or all of us have heard of PTSD, the post-traumatic stress syndrome, and the feelings that, that occur when you've gone through a major trauma in your life and, and later on you have flashbacks to this traumatic event that, uh, that can be really detrimental. Well, in the current literature in, in psychology today, there's uh, a new or somewhat new, at least to me, uh, term of acute stress uh, disorder. And it has to do with, I think, sort of what we're experiencing now. This has been going on in the United States for six, eight months. And, and we're at, as, as we're going through this, we're experiencing stress. And I totally agree with everything that's been said up to now about how we all feel the stress, we all are, are subject to the stress, that's not the issue. The issue becomes how do we deal with that stress once we feel it? And using unhealthy habits is a, is a, bad, uh, a bad option. That's not to say we don't, we don't feel those things, we don't experience those things, but it's what do we do in response to the feelings that get to be really important. And as was mentioned, if you start drinking too much, if you, if you see yourself or loved ones starting to withdraw, uh, if you see them starting to, to do things that uh, maybe they haven't done before, of, of getting rid of, of stuff that you know is important to them, or uh, <clears throat> they start saying things about, well, maybe my life isn't worth living. Or if you start feeling like your life isn't worth living, don't, don't let that build. Do something about it. Reach out to the numbers that have been given to you and, uh, and try to, 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 to engage the help that is available rather than letting it uh, build because uh, it is through that getting that help that you have uh, the best chance of, of, of moving forward in a positive direction. Resorting to the use of drugs or hurting others or hurting yourself is certainly not the way to go. And again, thank you very much for, for letting me be part of your program. Definitely, definitely. Thank you, Dr. Jansen. Memo, I feel like just punching and kicking. I just get angry over the smallest thing my wife and kids do. Can you tell me what I can do in case some of our audiences feel the same way? What, what can we do for that? Right, of course. And, and so I think it's uh, important that here we talk about um, that in some of these occasions, some people may be hit and slapped or abused in any other way. And we just want to emphasize that, that this is not okay and you can get help. Sometimes we may make justifications for, for people in our lives. And whenever you're abused, it's not okay. And it's helpful to recognize those moments. Uh, so if you are in an emergency, please call 911. It, that hotline is, is there to help you. It, People will come to your to your aid. Uh, if you're not in any immediate danger, you can call Department of Family and Protective Services at that phone number mentioned right there, 1-800-252-5400. Or another hotline you could call is Center Against Sexual and Family Violence Hope Line, 915-593-7300. Uh, so it's important to recognize abuse and understand that it is not okay. Thank you so much for that memo. And so it's also important to ask ourselves, how do we help ourselves now? Um, so it's important to be aware of, of how you're feeling. Some of the things that we've been mentioning earlier is to recognize if I'm, if I'm stressed, if I'm upset, if I'm sad, these are all normal feelings. It's okay to feel them, but just be aware of them. And if the pandemic gets to be too much for you, with too many stressors in your life, it's okay to ask for help. Talk to somebody if you're feeling very sad, worried, 
or anxious in any way. Like we mentioned, there's counselors to help, there's doctors to help, but also some of your family members and friends. Uh, know that stress and fear is normal, especially as we go back to school. There's all sorts of uncertainties around school and our work and how we're gonna make that work again. So uh, feeling those stressors is okay and it's normal, just understand how to cope with them. And it's like Dr. Jansen said, how do we deal with some of these things? And one of the things that has come up since the pandemic started is this use of virtual media to communicate with others. And so keep in touch with friends and family through text, social media, and video calls is another way to uh, connect with the people who are important in our lives. Yeah, I couldn't have said it any better. Thank you, Mel. Abby, do you have any kids? How can I help my kids through this? Well, first, let me tell you how to help your kids, okay? So the way you help your kids is you just got to stop and listen to them, all right? You got to listen to what these kids are doing. You got to listen to what these kids are thinking and saying. And you got to be patient with them. They're going to be terrified, okay? There is this giant, scary COVID monster coming to get them. So you need to really talk openly about how they're feeling, Talk openly about how you're feeling. How can your kids relate with you if you don't show them how you're scared too and what you're not scared about? So this is where it's important to really have a good line of communication with your kids, Summer. And that's why you also have to be patient uh, with these kids as they kind of transition back to school. Online learning is really hard if no one's told you yet. It's way different than what we're used to. And honestly, when you're like, eight years old or 10 years old or even 15 years old you just want to be around your friends and now you can't you don't even get that when you go to school and you're just stuck looking at a computer it can be tough so I think it's important to just reach out and get help if you're struggling in this process there's a lot of different resources that different institutions and programs have set up including our own at Texas Tech to help give you the resources you need on how to better communicate with your kids and that's like the main thing is communication. Now, separate from communication, I would just say make sure you are really, you know, seeing them on what they're like, what they're getting stressed on. So just have an eye on whatever they're looking at and whatever they're stressing them out and vice versa. And tell the kids that you know, like your own kids, to do the same for other kids, like their siblings and friends. Because sometimes we adults don't have the best idea of what's going on. And when that's the case, you know, we have no other option but to rely on kids to kind of help report things. So it's important to educate kids on how to identify when their friends and their siblings are struggling. So that way they know to ask for help and get help from an adult and to help each other through this time. So that's why I'm going to be going around and helping all the kids I can like this. Um, including yours, Amr, right? Because I don't have any kids. Well, wait until you get kids, Avi. <laughs> all right, Thanks. all right. Um, all right, Dr. Longhurst, I've been feeling a little bit stressed lately, honestly, and I'm sure our audience here today are feeling a little bit stressed too. Um, since you're our main psychologist, can you please give us a quick exercise to help us relax tonight? Yes, absolutely. I think all of the information that has been shared today is um, so useful. And, and I'm hoping that the audience so far is, is taking note of all the important numbers we're sharing. And I also wanted to share a mindfulness exercise. So some of you may have heard of mindfulness, others may have not. Um, but in case you're not familiar, or even if you are, um, mindfulness is really a uh, it's, it's a practice of paying attention to something um, intentionally, so on purpose, without judgment. And so I'm going to lead you on a little exercise to give you a taste of what mindfulness is. If this is your first time or you're barely beginning this type of practice, um, I want you to think of a few things. One, it's okay if it doesn't feel right or you know, when I say that in, in quotes, feel right. Um, it's okay if you feel like you're not doing it correctly um, because it's just a matter of listening to the instructions that I'm, 
I'm giving you as I lead you on this exercise. And again, when your attention wanders, because it will, it's normal, our minds go all over the place. I want you just to bring your attention back to your breath. So this mindfulness exercise is going to focus on the breath because our breathing is an anchor that we can go back to time and time again throughout our day, throughout our lives, with, without any equipment whatsoever. So Amir, I want you to get comfortable and I want everyone else in the audience to get comfortable. Start by settling into a comfortable position. And you can allow your eyes to either close or keep them open with a softened gaze. And you can look down below you at a spot. And I want you to begin by taking several long, slow, deep breaths, breathing in fully and exhaling fully. Breathe in through your nose and out through your nose or mouth. Allow your breath to find its own natural rhythm. Bring your full attention to noticing each in-breath as it enters your nostrils, travels down into your lungs, and causes your belly to expand. Notice each out-breath as your belly contracts and air moves up through the lungs, back up through the nostrils or mouth and invite your full attention to flow with your breath. Notice how the inhale is different from the exhale. You may experience the air as cool as it enters your nose and warm as you exhale. And as you turn more deeply inward, begin to let go of noises around you if you're distracted by sounds in the room, simply notice them and then gently bring your intention back to your breath. Simply breathe as you breathe, not striving to change anything about your breath. Don't try to control your breath in any way. Observe and accept your experience in this moment without judgment paying attention to each inhale and exhale. If your mind wanders, because it will, to thoughts or plans or problems, simply notice your mind wandering. Watch the thought as it enters your awareness as neutrally as possible, then practice letting go of it and always bring your attention back to your breath. Again, view your breath as an anchor that you can return to over and over again when you become distracted by thoughts, feelings, or sensations, noticing when your mind has wandered, observing the types of thoughts that hook or distract you, and just noticing because noticing is the richest part of learning. And as you notice, you can always detach from those thoughts and then mindfully focus your awareness back on the qualities of your breath. Practice coming home to the breath with your full attention, watching the gentle rise of your stomach on the in-breath and the relaxing letting go on the out-breath Allow yourself to be completely with your breath as it flows in and out in the present moment. You might also become distracted by pain or discomfort in the body, maybe some twitching or itching sensations that draw your attention away from your breath. You may also notice feelings arising, perhaps sadness, or happiness, frustration or contentment, maybe frustration with the exercise. Acknowledge whatever comes up, including thoughts about your experience, and simply notice where your mind went, again, without judging it, not pushing it away, not clinging to it or wishing it were different, 
but simply refocus your mind and guide your attention back to your breath. Take this moment to breathe in and breathe out, following the air all the way in and all the way out. Mindfully be present moment by moment with your breath. And now as this practice comes to an end, I want you to slowly allow your attention to expand. Notice your entire body and then beyond your body to the room that you're in. And when you're ready, open your eyes and come back fully alert and awake. The breath is always with you as a refocusing tool to bring you back to the present moment. Set your intention to use this practice throughout your day to help cultivate and strengthen your attention. Wow, thank you so much. That was definitely very relaxing. Unfortunately, folks, we're, we're running out of time here. I'm just gonna quickly tell you about another exercise that you guys can try at home. It's called the raisin exercise. You can just pick any fruit or, or anything that you wanna um, you know, uh, think about and just pretend that it's something that you've never seen before. How does it look? How does it make you feel? What is something interesting about it? Um, and then just have a positive thought about the pandemic, um, thoughts that you've never had before. But that concludes our show for tonight, folks. Thank you all to our wonderful guests today. Thank you for taking the time to inform us about the pandemic and how we can cope through it all. Uh, to our wonderful audience, thank you all for your support. And we hope that you walk away with this show saying no to drugs and alcohol and yes to midday naps with Dr. Longhurst. Wonderful breathing exercise. <laughs> Remember, we're all in this together. Um, listen to, your, to our wonderful mentor, Dr. Jensen, and don't resort to unhealthy habits. If you do, don't be afraid to ask for help. See you all next time.